I promised the new friends that I made at home, a pair of LDS missionaries, that I'd make the journey to see DC's Mormon temple. A few months before, the Beehive State Boys introduced me to their community after cornering me on my way to my late night class, traditionally the best way to introduce yourself to a young woman, <laughs> and said, what about you? What do you think of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Another student in the background glanced over her shoulder as she did a little jog in the opposite direction. <laughs> Everything about the missionaries, their matching cult issued outfits, their symmetry, their general optimism towards life, would normally irritate the shit out of me. I had done enough church camp in my youth to, in my opinion, get me to a less roasty part of hell. And the closest I desired to get to religion nowadays was an Easter basket in my 20s. Please, mom, if you're listening. Uh, <laughs> but I had left a toxic and abusive relationship just two weeks later, and my so-called friends were nowhere to be found in the aftermath. It was a social circle where I always felt like the bad guy, the crazy one, the fool, but without it, I was profoundly lonely. I had a lot going for me at 20, a nice job, a nearly finished degree, but I couldn't stand the feeling of coming home to an empty house in an empty phone. And I thought maybe, just maybe, this Jesus guy could hook it up with some newer, nicer buddies of my very own. Elder Karen and Elder Corden quickly took me in as their own, even if I was a bit of an odd duck in their group. I did lessons over lunch with the boys, participated in four night a week activities, bought knee covering floral print dresses, and went to church with every young single adult Mormon of Long Beach. <laughs> they were California Mormons, less bigoted in practice as their scripture was in print, and I was starting to warm to them, growing closer as the weeks went on. I wasn't looking for a church by any means, but it looked like a church found me and gave me community that I needed to prop me out of my depression. One of the missionaries told me it was a sign from God that I ran into them that day. And I held that idea tightly because if God really did send them, it means that maybe she did give a shit about me in the first place. A central idea in Mormonism is that if you ask God a question in good faith, you will always get an answer back. After much back and forth, politely declining offers to become an official member of the Joe Smith Social Club, the missionaries promised that they'd stop asking if I visited the DC temple on an upcoming trip to the east. I sat on a bench outside and prayed for an answer on whether the Book of Mormon was true. I rolled my eyes at the request, outwardly stating how utterly insane it sounded. But yet, a few months later, there I was, sneaking away from the work conference I was attending long enough to hop on the near empty DC Metro train in the gloomy, in the middle of a gloomy spring Tuesday in my high top chucks and warmest SoCal grade winter coat, <laughs> waiting out the ride to the Maryland suburbs. After pulling into the station, I realized that even though it was connected by a major public transit, I was in the middle of nowhere, looking at nothing but a single silent street and a graveyard. Slightly alarmed, I scurried quickly to the pickup zone where the last temple shuttle was coming in five minutes. Five minutes turned into 10 minutes that turned into 15 minutes standing in the bitter cold until I started down the road on foot, just as the rain began to turn white. I pulled my hat over my headphones and headed down the path as I got lost in my thoughts. Well, you know, they're nice people with with good morals and stuff, I mean, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. They're a notoriously homophobic and racist organization that compares your ancestors to dirty, filthy, and loathsome people. Well, maybe I can, I can be a voice for change. <laughs> Don't all Mormons have like 15 kids? You refer to children as animated Satan come. <laughs> I don't, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Later, <laughs> bitch, you're 20, you're already two babies behind. <laughs> but they all look so happy. <laughs> My thoughts cut off as I hit the last square of sidewalk. The maps app was pushing me down a dense forest where anything further than 10 feet in front of me was swallowed by the fog. I took my chances, playing a real life game of Frogger. I was getting honked at, flipped off, and as the slush falling from the sky came down harder, I started slipping down the shallow side banks. As much as I wanted to write this trip off as an obligation to humor my friends, I knew it was something that I wanted more strongly than I was willing to admit. It wasn't just the friends and the place to be on weeknights anymore. 
problematic aspects and all, I wanted to be part of this community, a community that provided so much certainty in a time where I had none of it. When you're a Mormon, you go to church every Sunday, you get married, you have your babies, and you live your life in a manner that is perfectly and divinely mapped for you. It wasn't a life that I dreamed of, patriarchal and colorless, but it was a life that was safe and a people that made me feel safe. When I was in this community, I didn't have to worry about my children growing up in a broken home, about something being slipped in my drink, or whether I'd be pushed from behind into a bedroom at a party. I, was the, I wasn't their polished type, sailor's mouth, pierced, tattooed, and immodest as fuck. <laughs> but I knew that my previous life, surrounded by abuse and anger and addiction, wasn't an option anymore. I wasn't going to be the next family member in a long line of general trauma patients. I was willing to tweak myself, dedicate myself to this, if it meant quelling the constant anxiety and turmoil that I had been trapped in for years. It wasn't, an, it wasn't a want for my answer to be yes. It was a need. After some silence on the road for about an hour, I was able to scamper down the road until I got to a dirt bend where the sign beside an overpass read the words Mormon Temple, with an arrow pointing north. By this time, the slurry stopped and the sun began to peek out from the clouds, the light catching on the angel Moroni statue blowing his trumpet above the treetops. I picked the foliage from out of my clothes and fixed my hair as I walked through the iron gates and turned to see the opening, of, or turned through the opening to see the temple. It's Disneyland-esque gold and marble flawlessness sitting behind a field of tulips. For a moment, my heart welled with something my hardened, jaded soul almost couldn't identify. Hope. I cut myself off at this moment, eager to go ask my question. Before I entered the center, two perfectly groomed blonde women, missionaries but who probably could have passed her angels themselves, stood side by side as I walked closer to the doors. The women introduced themselves, asking if they could assist me before I told them what I was there to do. They looked at each other for a beat before turning back to me with a pitying look. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm afraid we can't let you in at this time. I stood there confused. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not trying to enter the temple. I just, we, we know. But, but you're, the second companion stops and gestures towards my shoes, covered in a layer, incur a layer of mud incurred from walking through the weather. You know, if, I have, if you have a napkin, a paper towel, I could, you're welcome to come back another time, the first woman says. Please, I just, we hope you didn't travel too far. Get home safe, okay? She chirped before turning around and going back inside. I thought about staying in the parking lot, asking my very important question to God outside, but it seemed like he had already sent the signs. A missed shuttle, a treacherous walk, I mean shit, God's very own PR team just told me themselves. <laughs> I was not welcome. The clouds once again closed and the rain started as I went down the path I came, the car swishing dangerously close to me while the sky grew darker and darker. As my emotions crept up into my throat, I turned my music up louder until I slipped face down into a patch of dirty snow, where I stayed for a minute as the tears warmed my face. The suspicion of what Mormon culture thought of people like me was confirmed. A dirty stranger who had no place in their home. An outsider who, no matter what I did, could never be one of them. More importantly at that point, I came to the realization that this must have been what God thought of me too, irredeemable. I got on the train and went back to the Omni I was staying at in the city, ignoring the lobby full of my colleagues, probably wondering why the fuck I was covered in mud. I went home the next day, ignoring my phone blowing up with texts from elders asking how awesome the temple was, how strong the spirit moved me, and of course, if I would like to buy them lunch so I can tell them all about it. After reading these and thinking, there's no way these motherfuckers can be real about this, it struck me. These boys and the sisters at the temple are were my age, probably convincing, convincing themselves the same thing that I am, that their life path was one that was going to keep them safe. 
The sense of dread I had felt at the prospect of having to pave a new life from scratch started to feel like a mark of pride. It was hard, as hard as it would be to forge a new identity from nearly nothing, I wasn't going to spend my life being a square peg. As I ghosted the elders and in a gentler way told my Mormon friends about the, my realization, this, these texts and visits came less and less frequent and I was okay with it. Kindness and structure aren't exclusive in religion and I slowly but surely realized that there, was plenty, uh, there were plenty of others who would grant me that just being me. With the mud cleaned off my chucks and my coat back from the dry cleaners, I blocked their numbers and ventured off to find a life path more true to myself, preferably one that would let me have the occasional IPA and three hours of my Sunday back. <laughs> That's our friend Kristen Hernandez. <laughs>